Hi, welcome to the Joy of Vinyl. Today's episode is about cleaning your stylus, something we should all do when it comes to our turntables and the care of our records. When I think back to how I treated my stylus when I was a kid, I, I cringe. I can't count the times I dropped the tone arm before it reached the platter, which caused the stylus to bounce against the side and then the deck. The speakers always reacted with a loud thump, and I'm sure they cringed too. I mean, who wouldn't? I remember one horrific day after I'd received my first automatic turntable for Christmas. I might have been 11 or 12. I hit start without realizing I'd forgotten to put the record on. Now that created a sound I'd like to forget, and I'm pretty sure it was the cackle of demons from hell. But I'm happy to say those careless days of abusing my stylus are long gone. I treat it as I would an extension of my body. Neither of us will live forever, but I do all I can to make sure its life is a long and healthy one filled with music and joy. Now, how do I do that? Well, easy. I keep it clean. I know, I can get a little weird with this stuff. So let's get right to it. Clean your stylus. If you think about it, it makes sense. Your stylus is in constant contact with the grooves of your record. Now, if those grooves are full of tiny particles of dust or oils, which most of them are, sorry, where do you think a lot of it ends up? On the diamond tip of your stylus. Even clean records will have some bits of unwanted artifacts in those grooves. You can't prevent the dust in the air from settling into them when you place the record on the platter. And over time, that dust will build up on the stylus, affecting its effectiveness and its lifespan. Now, you certainly don't have to worry about doing this every time you play a record. But be aware that it needs to be cleaned, like your toilet. Imagine if you let that go for a week or two. Actually, don't imagine that. That's disgusting. When I finally got it through my thick head that a clean stylus also prolonged the life of my records, I smartened up and bought a stylus brush. Say that three times fast. Stylus brush. Stylus brush. So anyways, this was my go-to for years. The last one I bought was the Boundless Stylus Brush. You can find a link to it in the show notes. The brush's bristles are very soft, non-abrasive, and won't do any damage. Don't rub your finger along it to test this. You want to keep all oils and dead skin particles away from it. I've also heard of people using a toothbrush, but I can't recommend that. Please don't use a toothbrush. Now to use the stylus brush, gently allow the bristles to sweep across the head of the stylus in a back to front motion. Don't use a front to back or side to side motion because you don't want to put unwanted pressure against the cantilever. That's the thin metal arm of the stylus. And that's all there is to it. Some brushes come with a solution that you drop onto the bristles to help with cleaning. Now, I've never used a cleaning solution with my stylus, so it wouldn't be fair to speak to it. But what I can speak to is my new favorite method to clean my stylus, and that is the Onzao Zero Dust. I say new favorite method because I bought it last year after reading about it and doing some research. It's more expensive than a stylus brush, which caused me to deliberate whether I really wanted to set my brush aside. But in the end, my curiosity won out and I ordered one. Now the Zero Dust is made in Japan and it looks like a small gelatinous bubble encased in a plastic container. The lid comes off and serves as a plastic magnifying glass so you can view the condition of the stylus and the subsequent results after you clean it. The instructions are written in both Japanese and English and they describe the Zero Dust as being a quote, newly developed ultra soft plastic and that it's also softer than baby skin with 15 times more elasticity. I don't know how they measure that, but whatever, I get it. It's soft. Marketing, right? And the cleaning process itself, extremely simple. Even more so than using a stylus brush. All that's required to clean your stylus with the zero dust is to gently lower it into the gelatinous bubble. The directions recommend once or twice, and voila, your stylus is now clean. Now, will this give my stylus eternal life? No, sorry, but it will prolong its life, just like good hygiene and eating habits will prolong yours. If you notice any of these things, dull sound, excessive skipping, a bent cantilever, ouch, any of that, then stop playing your records and buy a new stylus. A bad one will ruin your record. 
The manual that came with your turntable should tell you the proper replacement model. If, like me, you misplaced your manual, a quick Google search should do the same. Now this might lead you to ask how often you should change your stylus. Opinions vary. I've read after 1,000 hours of play, which is somewhere around 1,400 to 1,500 records. I hate math, and I play at least two to three records a day, so I play it safe and change mine once a year. As always, I hope this helps. Happy spinning.